In the depths of the woods behind the shrine, the sound of a hammer striking a nail was echoing through the trees. The 71-year-old local man followed the sound, dreading what he would find. Scattered all throughout the wood were straw dolls, their torsos pierced with nails. There in the clearing, he saw a haggard woman with long dirty hair murmuring as she drove the nail through yet another straw doll. Her pale white face tightened in rage as she slowly turned her head to look at the old man. Kifune Shrine in Kyoto has a long history. It is known as a place where a water god and a god of marriage are enshrined, but on the other hand, it is also known as a place to commit a strange cursing ritual. It is the head shrine of about 450 Kifune shrines in Japan. It is named after its water god, Ki meaning god or lord, and Fune meaning boat. It is said that since ancient times, Emperors have offered horses to the shrine to gain the patronage of the water god, Takagami. In times of drought, a black horse was offered, and in times of prolonged rain, white horses. This is said to be the origin of the current form of the prayer boards, known as Enma. One must purchase these Enma, and write their prayers on them. Princess Iwanaga is also enshrined here as a goddess of marriage. She is a god cursed with eternal life and youth. Her name means timeless rock. It is said she was rejected for her ugliness by her husband, the god Ninigi, for which he and his descendants were cursed with mortality. Iwanaga, saddened by the rejection, gazed into a mirror and beheld her terrible face. She threw the mirror away, but it was enshrined by a village which it illuminated forever. The shrine was possibly founded by the 18th Emperor, Emperor Hanze, who was born in 336 CE. According to the story, the mother of the legendary first emperor, Jinmu, landed her yellow boat at the site and built the shrine in honour of the water god who had carried her there. In 1046, the shrine was washed away by a flood, and a new shrine building was built in a different location in 1055. It is said that spirits gather at temples and shrines, but temples and shrines have very different responsibilities. At temples, one responsibility Buddhist priests have is to read sutras to send spirits to nirvana. People's remains may be interned at temples and so one of their roles is to handle the burial of those who have died. Shrines, on the other hand, are for praying to gods and giving offerings. Shinto priests do not just perform exorcisms, they also purify people and clean away any impurities attached to them. Although one can receive purification to drive away the uncleanliness of death and have funerals at shrines, it is not a fundamental role of shrines. Shrines do not have graveyards, and have no role in sending spirits to that other world. So spirits that wish to enter Nirvana will not be found at shrines. On the other hand, it is thought that spirits that wish to enter Nirvana often move towards temples in order to gain the aid of priests. Shrines have very long histories, and in some cases are built on ancient burial mounds or kofuns. There are many shrines built on kofuns all over Japan. They were considered holy ground before the practice of Shintoism. Those who are buried in kofuns are said to become gods themselves, so-called Shinrei. These spirits may therefore be angered by the construction of shrines. When we compare temples and shrines, ghosts are witnessed more at shrines. One reason is that shrines are open at night. Generally, the gates of temples are shut when the sun sets, 
while shrines have Tory gates, but they are always open by design. Temples are often also inhabited by priests, who may build their house on the property. Shrines, meanwhile, are often small and uninhabited, so it is a rite of passage to visit a shrine at night and test one's bravery. Also, because the grounds of shrines are often in woods and forests, they are naturally darker and more mysterious places where people are more inclined to think that they have seen a ghost. Before we examine the cursing ritual at Kifune Shrine, we must first understand the story of Hashihime. The ritual is said to have been inspired by the story Kenmaki. A woman, Hashihime, bore a jealous grudge towards another woman. She stayed at Kifune Shrine for seven days, begging a god to turn her into a demon, so that she may get revenge. O great and powerful Kami of Kifune, grant me the powers of a devil while I am still living. Make me a fierce being, terrible to behold. Let my outer form match the flame of jealousy that burns so brightly within. Let me kill. Eventually the god relented and told her, Perform the ritual I will teach you, and soak in the Yodogawa river for 21 days. She returned to the city, tied her hair into five horns, painted her whole face and body red. Upon her head she wore an iron trivet, on each spike a lit torch. She ran south towards the river, and all who saw her horrific form died on the spot. She dove into the river, and there she lay for 21 days, until she rose as a still living demon. She did not pass away, her human form unnaturally transformed into that of a demon. She began killing people indiscriminately. If she killed a woman, she would disguise herself as a man. If she wished to kill a man, she would disguise herself as a woman. Hashihime killed so many, that eventually the people of Kyoto were afraid to leave the house between the hours of 3pm and 5pm, the hours of the monkey, and the time at which Hashihime would appear. Yorimitsu, one of the four great warriors of the time, was sent to dispatch Hashihime. Crossing a bridge, he encountered a woman as pale white as snow, walking alone. Worried for her safety, Yorimitsu insisted that she ride with him to her home. Climbing on his horse, they rode towards the outskirts of the city. Suddenly, the woman, Hashihime, turned into a demon and flew into the air carrying Yorimitsu by his topknot. Without fear, Yorimitsu cut off her arm and fell onto the roof of a nearby shrine. Hashihime's arm still clutched his hair, which was now turning snow white. The demon flew off, armless, towards the mountains, to return again some day. The story was retold in the no play Kanawa, or the Iron Ring, written in the Muromachi period. A woman, Hashihime, visits Kifune Shrine where she is told, If you cut and wear a red cloth, paint your face red, and place an iron ring on your head, you will become a demon. She does so, and over a period of seven days, slowly creates a curse for the couple. She torments the dreams of her ex-husband and his wife, until they seek the assistance of a sorcerer. The sorcerer creates two large straw dolls of the couple to trick Hashihime. When she curses the couple, the doll absorbs the curse and becomes the demon described in the previous story. The demon jumps into the river Uji, warning the couple that it will return again some day. In truth, the jealous female spirit of Hashihime is even older. Originally, she was the spirit of the Uji River, who protected its bridge from attack, giving her the name, the Princess of Uji Bridge. The Uji River has special significance, since it is the only river which flows out of the largest lake in Japan, Lake Biwa. The bridge which she guards is also known as one of the three oldest bridges in Japan. Hashihime is enshrined at Hashihime Shrine in Uji. This infamous shrine, built in 646 CE, is a place to be separated from troublesome problems. It has therefore supposedly become a popular place for women to pray for divorce and miscarriages. The shrine sells scissors that are able to cut the wearer free of their attachments. It is therefore a taboo for lovers 
and those who are about to be married to pass in front of the shrine. The cursing ritual performed at Kifune Shrine is known as Ushi no Koku Maidi. It takes its name from the hours in the Chinese zodiac within which the ritual must take place. The hours between 1 and 3 in the morning are the hours of the ox. At Kifune Shrine it was believed that normal prayers made at this time were more likely to be answered. This belief became mixed up with the legend of Hashihime and the cursing ritual was born. The rules of the ritual vary, but generally they are as follows. First, you must prepare a straw doll to represent the victim of your curse. Inside you should put the hair, nail, blood or a piece of paper with their name written on. Then you must get dressed. Traditionally, one must wear white clothes, a small mirror on a necklace and an iron trivet on your head, just as Hashihime wore. On each of the three spikes of the trivet, you must place a burning candle and then an iron ring holds the trivet in place. In this way, one resembles Hashihime, a powerful beast, which gives the ritual power. In your mouth, you must hold a comb or a razor. This is to prevent you from speaking whilst at the shrine, as the ritual must be performed in silence. Arriving at the shrine during the hours of the ox, the witching hour, when the powers of the spirits are at their strongest, one must enter and find the most sacred tree in the shrine, the Shinboku. This tree is home to kami spirits, and thus piercing it would be a great crime. Then, nail the doll to the tree using long iron spikes. The target of the curse will then feel pain in that part of their body. The ritual must be repeated on seven nights. According to some accounts, on the seventh and final night, if one hits a nail into the doll's head, the cursed person will die. If you are a witness whilst performing the ritual at any time, you must kill those who have seen you, otherwise you will suffer the curse yourself. In the deep forest behind Kifune Shrine, the holes made by those who have performed the ritual may still be seen on the trees. It is said that after the ritual, wraiths or living ghosts will emerge from the body of the dolls and carry out the curse. Certainly, people have tried to curse people in this way. In fact, it was possible to buy cursing kits on the internet at one point in time. Performing the ritual is a crime and is considered an intent to harm akin to bullying or stalking. Those who have been prosecuted for committing the ritual have often claimed the impossibility defence, meaning that although they wished harm on the victim at the time, they did not really believe that the ritual would work and so should not be judged too harshly. Perhaps even in these modern times, Hashihime and her wraiths are still lurking amongst the trees, awaiting the next jealous lover to come knocking.